Let's go do a deeper dive now into the state of Apple from a fundamental basis. We're joined by Technalysis Research President and Chief Analyst Bob O'Donnell. Bob, it's good to see you. So there have been some, I mean, obviously Apple has been partially a victim of higher interest rates, the perception around that, but there's also been real concerns about demand going into recession, about the, you know, sort of rocky closure and reopenings in China. What's your sort of 100,000 foot take here on what's been going on at Apple? Well, you know, there's a number of interesting things going on here, Julie. I mean, it, you know, you've got, first of all, the fact that as we've seen around the world, purchasing by consumers of devices that exploded during the pandemic really kind of slowed down quite a bit late summer, early fall. And of course, Apple uh, was a big part of that. Smartphone sales are down for the year. Uh, PC sales after exploding and, and Apple getting a big share of that have gone way down. And then on top of that, you have the challenges, the manufacturing challenges that you hinted at in China, where the one phone that was selling particularly well was the iPhone uh, the 14 Max. Uh, and the Max Pro, and those were the phones that were most impacted by the that factory uh, challenges, you know, in uh, with COVID in China. So it was a really kind of a double whammy for Apple on the iPhone 14. You know, and, and the other problem that we're seeing, I think, with tech in general is, you know, we've really got to this mature phase where, to be honest with you, a lot of things have gotten a little boring. I hate to say it, but, you know, I think hopefully in 23, that turns out to be a good thing because we see a, a rationalization of where things are, including Apple, and then a more modest sense of growth. And even from a product side, and I'm sure you guys have talked about this, you know, there were stories last week about Apple, you know, the car not going to be quite as advanced as everybody thought. It's going to be more like, well, yeah, it's a, an electric car with some assisted driving, but it's got a wheel and pedals and, and the headset that they're planning to do, um, perhaps next year, perhaps in 24, is going to be more along the lines of what Meta already has. So that's not quite as revolutionary. So I don't know, there's this interesting sense of, uh, you know, they haven't really had major innovations for a long time. They've executed incredibly well on the products and services that they've had. But then, you know, there's always been that what's next question, and, and that keeps getting pushed a little bit further out. And I think that's impacting the stock as well. Can, can that rationalization or normalization in tech that we're seeing at the same time of this trend of a more value conscious consumer, can that initiate even the next big super cycle that Apple has come to depend on over the previous several years at this point? Well, it's a great question, Brad. And I, you know, I'm not positive it can, just to be honest with you, because uh, you know, look, iPhones, everybody's like, you can't tell the 12 from the 13 from the 14 anymore. And people know that, and they're holding onto their phones longer. Uh, again, Apple got a nice bump from the M series Max and, and they've grown quite nicely and they're getting into enterprise now, which is, is relatively new for them to be a big player in enterprise. But at the same time, it's, you know, these things are, are devices people are recognizing, hey, I can hold on to this longer. If times are tight, there are other things I can do. The one savior, of course, has been the services business for Apple. And that has come, you know, become this enormous a growth engine for them. And I think that will continue because people have become accustomed to using a lot of the services. Of course, obviously streaming, there's a lot of competition. Let's not kid ourselves. But still, Apple's been able to do a lot better than I think people expected versus big players like uh, Netflix and, um, and others. Um, and the music business continues to do well iCloud and other services are all part of this. And, you know, I, I still think there's opportunity there. That's where that modest, continuous growth can, has been for Apple, has been in services, not so much on the hardware side. But Bob, is, is next year going to be the year that Apple needs to, I would argue, go back to being Apple with that game-changing product? Do you think they have that in the pipeline and is next year uh, the year hits it? Well, you know, Sauce, I, that's, of course, what everybody's hoping for, and that's what this headset's going to be, because the car, uh, whatever happens with an Apple car, is going to be 25, 26, likely. So 23 is the year, theoretically, of this headset. Um, and the concern is, you know, rumors are saying this is going to be maybe a $2,000, $3,000 headset, which immediately makes it a very niche product. And it's not that AR vision where you can see, you know, it's going to be like more of a goggles kind of a, a format, which, again, I don't know if that's really a mainstream product. There will be people who will be interested in it. They will absolutely upset that marketplace whenever, as they always do when they enter a market. But I'm not sure it's that mainstream blowout. And exactly to your point, that's of that Apple being Apple and just kind of knocking everybody's socks off. So we'll see. That is, in fact, the biggest question mark for 2023. 
All right, we'll leave it there. Technologist Research President Bob O'Donnell, always good to see you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.